Woo! The next few days were a complete blur. I couldn't make any sense of my feelings. I couldn't escape unrelenting thoughts of Jason. I certainly couldn't fathom how I'd I'd resume my normal life, a full-time career in financial services, the care of two young children, household chores, social engagements, being a wife. How could I go back? I can't even go back to work. I can't even go back to my children. Oh my God. Let alone a wife. We already know you was never a wife, sis. What I did understand was that the successful, comfortable, and somewhat predictable, predictable life I had spent 20 years building was now of no consequence. The life I've spent 20 years building my, her life was now of no consequence. It didn't matter. I simply didn't care for the streets. Ooh, ciao. Hey, guys. It's your girl, Melanie, and I'm back again with another video, a reaction. And... Um, guys, my voice is out, but I'm okay. But my voice is still out. If you haven't been following me, it's kind of crazy. Also broken now. Um, so, but Amanda Trenfield, less than a month after I met my soulmate, I ended my 14 year marriage. Her picture again. Um, and she doesn't really have that much people following her. This is her Instagram, 513 followers. So, um, but she's made a whole career now of her being a thought. Um, and essentially, um, trying to cheat and leave her husband. Uh, and this is, this is her, her many pictures. Let's take a look there. Uh huh. So that's her on the right there. So this woman who is, I mean, I would say beyond middle aged or at least in appearance. Um, she looks very average. Uh, she doesn't look to be in super shape, not putting her down, but there's a point to why I'm saying this. So she left her 14 year marriage where there are women who are younger, childless, not married, um, have, you know, um, who are free to date. They are in super shape, gorgeous, and they have a hard time finding a man. We see this every day. Even supermodels will have a hard time finding a man. But this woman who is going into middle age, and this is important to point out because modern society will tell you no at any age you can find love and do this and 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 live your dreams and be happy okay but this woman even being married she decided that you know what this isn't enough i need more i'm not happy my feelings aren't a certain way in this marriage so i'm going to leave it um and really off of delusion and this is the delusion that's out there now that we see amongst women of all ages where they think you know what you know someday my prince will come prince charming that kind of disney dream that just doesn't it's not real okay it's not real and and she thought you know she had secured a husband could live out the rest of her life having the security of a husband the love of a husband but it was not enough. And this is what modern society has done to a lot of women walking away from marriages that are, and they're just absolute fools for. I wasn't expecting a formal dinner with, with, cheerful, with cheerful conference attendees in the beautiful Western Australia town of Margaret River to turn my life upside down. I had a good life. Make note guys, she had a good life. Her situation was good, okay? She's made this clear. She was not being abused or unloved or treated in a disrespectful way she had a good life i wasn't looking to upend it look at this jezebel i wasn't looking to upend it or was i and most of you guys know that i am divorced so because i know i'm gonna get there with your divorces i didn't file nor did i cheat nor was i you know was my marriage happy uh no because there were things going on but i was committed to marriage because that's how i was raised so i didn't file or cheat all right so but you're not getting all my personal details um, and this certainly is not my story. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't wish divorce on anyone. It's a horrible experience. I had decided only the week earlier to attend the three day event with my husband. So she's there with her husband, y'all, for the streets. Ooh, child. 
I wasn't in the family. I wasn't in the family holiday plan, and we had to arrange care for the children. Huh? I wasn't in the family. Okay, that makes sense. But I saw a perfect opportunity for us to reconnect as we had become quite distant. So their marriage became distant. And this is the thing. This is what marriage goes through. Sometimes you're really close. Sometimes there's distance. There's things that happen, you know, that can cause a strain. But overall, she had a good life. Okay. And her husband looks like he was willing to work on things and reconnect with her. Um, I believe that time away from the stress of everyday life was the perfect remedy to reignite our relationship. I believed the time away from the stress of everyday life was a perfect remedy to reignite our relationship. Did you? Did you, Amanda? Let's see. We entered the magnificent oak paneled dining room, taking our seats at a long, elegantly laid table. My husband sat to my left and quickly engaged with another couple in conversation. As I settled into my seat, I looked up and immediately lost my breath. When our eyes met, there was an instant familiarity that ran deeper than water cooler chat. Yeah, I bet it ran deep. You wanted it to run deep through the walls. Uh, these eyes had locked before. 12 years earlier, his name was Jason. I hadn't forgotten. Woo! Next to her husband. She is thinking she is locking eyes with another man. Guys, she is hunting for her. She's hunting, hunting for the pee. Woo! She want to push some pee. Push a pee. Oh, my gosh. And she... 12 years earlier, guys, I can't even remember people I met like a month ago. 12 years ago, this man was that significant to her? Jesus, okay. And she hadn't forgotten. So keep in mind, this one, she's been married for 14 years. She met this man two years into her marriage and has been thinking about him since that time. So for at least uh, 10 years of her, no, 12 years of her marriage, she was for the streets. Her mind was thinking about another man and was not really as invested into her marriage because she was still hoping one day to meet him and she can cap all she wants to, but she wanted, she, of course, 12 years, who does that? Throughout the dinner, I was my usual animated and conversational self. I was, after all, in sales. The group chatted happily, all of us enjoying an excellent des discussion. Who wrote this? Okay, nobody cares. Over the course of the evening, my attraction to Jason developed. It been there, it didn't develop, stop. I soon became aware of his every breath. Okay, has she had a mental evaluation? Who does that? If I'm feeling a man, I'm still not thinking about his every breath. Like you sound stalky, sis. Woo, yeah, okay. <clears throat> I soon became aware of his every breath and I unconsciously mirrored his pace. Okay, yeah, she's gonna need a mental mental wellness uh, uh, evaluation. Wow. I caught myself embarrassingly, embarrassingly looking at his chest through slim fitted white evening shirt. Yes, he had a fit toned and attractive body but was it his chest I was drawn to? Again, guys, we're going to need to go back to her Instagram. This woman, she's average. She is not fit in any way. But look, she wants somebody above where she is. Look. And let me move this up a little bit more. See if you guys can see. Look. This is her. This is her who wants this very fit man. But she's not what she is looking for. And again, I'm not putting her down. I'm just saying the delusion needs to be uh, talked about, honestly. And this is what a lot of modern women, this is a lot of women would be like this and say, no, I can get a 10. I am a 10. Every man wants me. Okay. Every man, uh, they want me. I'm, I still got it. I'm going to, you know, even in my elder years, you know, uh, I don't know how old she is, but to me, she looks like going into her 60s. And she really believed in the delusion and having this fit man. And that she would be, he would feel the exact same, this Chad, to her, Chad, was going to feel the exact same thing she felt towards him because he's breathing. And that she matched it. Notice all of this is coming from her, all in her mind. 
So again, like I said, we're going to need to do, you know, mental evaluations, especially a lot of people going and dating. People are like this and you're going to a relationship and you have no idea. And then when things go south, you didn't know how crazy they could actually be. Um, when dessert was served, he offered me a sample of his decadent and oozy chocolate pudding. I declined, but he scooped up a generous spoonful and fed me across the table anyway. Who is this husband that's letting some man feed his wife across the table in front of everybody? Okay, so th this is why, you see, you can tell this man's letting her get away with all kinds of ratchetness. You know, she's ratchet. Let's just be honest, she's ratchet. So he's letting her get away with all kinds of ratchetness to the point where he is allowing his wife to be fed, y'all, across the dinner table in front of everybody by another man. Okay. By the time the group left the restaurant late in the evening, all my senses were on high alert. No, girl, that puss was on high alert because you were in lust and you wanted him to knock you down. Um, husband be damned. It was abundantly clear that the energy between Jason and me was somehow changed. I instinctively understood, though, that this was more than just lust. No, she hasn't talked about any real conversation or anything that they've really talked about or they, you know, they known each other and, and blah, blah, blah. No, this is just all the delusion in her mind. Look at this. This is a warning for us women. We will get caught up in our heads thinking that we have just won. We have got the prize. We got the bag. We got that chat. And lo and behold, it is just in our head. And it doesn't matter if you're married or would have got a man. You still in the streets for the streets. Wow. I also under, um, I also understood that it was more than simply physical attraction, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. <sighs> At the hotel bar, Jason brought me a glass of my favorite rosé. We looked into each other's eyes, his dark and mysterious mind, big and brown. Like, she really thinks she's something, y'all. She really thinks she's Cindy Crawford out this. Woo, baby. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She is gone, y'all. Her big brown eyes. Like, it's sexy. And clinked glasses. The electricity between us was strong and raw. Mm, she wanted him to hit it raw, y'all. It traveled to my core. It was so intense. I needed to break eye contact. He, we, the energy. It was electric. My body was completely charged. I was completely on. Oh, Jesus. Make it stop. Make it stop. Y'all sure this isn't comedy writing? I feel like it's comedy. Like, she cannot be this. Wow. Then here in highlights, he displayed a level of familiarity normally reserved for close friends or lovers. How she know? How does she know? She don't know him, but only in her own. In her mind, she knows him, y'all. Okay, okay, I gotta calm down. I'm gonna calm down, I promise. I had to deter I had to I had to determinedly fight the continual pull to his side that I felt. As we moved around each other throughout the evening in various conversations though, we were always aware of one another's location. When we locked eyes across the room, the intensity of our stares magnified, becoming bolder as the night progressed. We held our gaze longer. Our connection deepened. All from looking at each other. Uh-huh. I love talking with him. I felt warm, relaxed, and safe in his presence. I felt like I could truly be myself at a level I wasn't familiar with. Not only did she in this one sense say she had to speak her truth, essentially, but she leveled up. Guys, this is a... Woo! <laughs> this is a level up queen right here. 
I realized that it was a feeling I hadn't enjoyed in a long time. Long, long time. Perhaps ever. Sure, we were laughing and joking like old friends, but the deepening connection through our eyes was undeniable. Mm -hmm. My behavior that evening was uncharacteristic. I stayed out way longer than I normally would. I usually, I'm usually an early to bed, early to rise type, but that was no ordinary evening. I was in no hurry to lose our connection. In fact, I wanted time to stand still. I wanted to remain in the energy, our energy, forever. <laughs> the bar called last drinks. Honey, y'all, I gotta drink water. <laughs> the bar called last drinks in the evening. Now the early morning. Is this supposed to be sexy? I really think she thinks this is like sexy and like, whoo, we getting turned, girl. You got the tingles in me. I just feel sorry for you. Like, this just sounds like mental illness. If I'm honest, it sounds like mental illness, and I'm not making fun of people with mental illness, but I'm saying this is this is where we're at as a society where people are so entitled, so narcissistic that she's literally having an entire relation. I mean, like time and space has transformed to bring these two together. And uh, yeah, she's just been a thought bucket, but she's justifying it through all these deep, deep connections. But OK, sis, we understand. <clears throat> the, go the goodbye was overt, open, and revealing of our mutual affection. What did he say? She's just talking about these feelings. There is not one word about how this is so perfect. We enjoyed a body, like he's actually saying anything to her. Like, have we heard anything he said to confirm this delusion? Jeez, uh, okay. The goodbye was overt, open, and revealing in our mutual affection. We enjoyed a body-hugging embrace. You mean a hug? A hug? Look how she's using this colorful, over-the-top language. Why? Because she needs us to feel it. She has to show the justification. The justification for her being a thought bucket. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> so we enjoyed a body-hugging embrace, hug, where I whispered into his ear. This isn't over. I need to see you again. He put his hands tightly on my waist and pulled me close. Yes, he replied. It was all I needed to hear. That's it. He just said yes. He could have been saying yes to get her out of there, knowing she's married, he has no attraction. She's like, uh, yes. You don't know how he said it. We don't know the tone, the inflection, because we already see this woman's reading. Like, you literally looking at her is enough. You just being there. You don't even look at her. She thinks that you want her. This this fine, let's go back. She, this woman believes this. And you women who are, uh, us women who are younger, who maybe are in shape, things going on, do not live in a land delusion. We can't even get that. But she thinks she is so entitled, so above. She she thinks that she is going to just, she's one. That, that we must have a problem, right? Because if she's feeling a connection like this, then something's wrong with us. I, I just, okay, I'm going on a rant. Let's keep going. I just can't. This woman is beyond. As I danced back to the room feeling vulnerable, but also unexpectedly whole. This man saying, yes, we don't, he, she's whole. I couldn't wipe the smile from my face. I had never felt anything like this before. I had never experienced this sensation. I didn't understand the energy. It was like an out of body or perhaps an in body. Oh, skeet, 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 skeet and retreat. An in body experience. Oh gosh, okay. I don't know who's worse, her the woman who requested had make a wish peen or the woman who got knocked down by a homeless man cheated her husband with a homeless man guys leave a comment which one of these scallywags is the absolute scum of the earth um who who takes the cake i know without hesitation without question without any doubt in my mind my body or my heart 
that the energy we experienced that evening was our souls connecting. I felt I left Margaret River a different woman. I knew in my heart, in my soul, in the very fabric of my being that I had profoundly changed. I couldn't articulate these feelings, the sensations, the experience, the connectedness I experienced with Jason was at a level impossible to describe. All I knew for certain was that in this one encounter, in the most unlikely of places, under the most unusual of circumstances, had drastically, had dramatically altered my life. Y'all, I'm getting tired of reading. Like, can she just get straight to the point? I know I can ramble, but good gracious us. Woo! The next few days were a complete blur. I couldn't make any sense of my feelings. I couldn't escape unrelenting thoughts of Jason. I certainly couldn't fathom how I'd resume my normal life, a full-time career in financial services, the care of two young children, household chores, social engagements, being a wife? How can I go back? I can't even go back to work. I can't even go back to my children. Oh my God. Let alone a wife. We already know you was never a wife, sis. What I did understand was that the successful, comfortable, and somewhat predictable, predictable life I had spent 20 years building was now of no consequence. Got somewhere to go later. <clears throat> the life I've spent 20 years building my her life was now of no consequence. It didn't matter. I simply didn't care. No, it's these men out here, y'all. It's the men, it's the men. You'd be surprised how many women think like this. Think like this. Wow. I just met my soulmate. What could possibly be more important than that? Less than a month of, after meeting Jason, having no communication with him since our time in Margaret River, I ended my 14 year relationship with my husband. The woman who had been so careful, so planned, so organized, and so clear about her life, the, uh, the path her life would take, had just made the most dramatic decision of her life, one affecting the dearest to her, her family. Her family, she didn't give a good goddamn about her young children, her even her career, her life, her husband. Nothing mattered but this woman's hot box. She chose a hot box. She threw away 20 years because she got a hot box. This, okay. So, so this article doesn't finish it out. Okay, guys, she wrote a whole book about this. Let's go into an article really quickly because this video is getting long, but I had to read the delusion so you can understand what actually happened to her. So in the New York Post, Mom left 14 years for 14 husband of 14 years for soulmate only to be rejected. Jason rejected her. Okay. She's been, it says, uh, a mom of two has been mocked on social media after revealing she left her longtime husband for a man she believed to be her soulmate only for him to promptly reject her. So we can now see Jason didn't feel any of this. He probably just thought she was like, nice but he wasn't feeling her and when she made that comment at the end when they hugged which she made into something bigger he said yes he probably thought she was crazy or drunk okay Amanda Treadfell has been described by critics as a self-destructive sociopath absolutely I 100% agree for writing about the emotional saga in her new book when a soulmate says no Woo! I'm gonna skip some of this because a lot of filler she sparked ridicule from readers who claimed the rejection was karma for the fact that she had blown up her own marriage and was willing to throw her kids to the side. Okay, this is how delusional this woman was. She was going to throw her kids away, her career away. There she, there she is, Miss Thoughtbox herself, 
sitting up there with her feet out like she she really she's sitting up there like she is a bad b like this shows her she really this i know she's a, the narcissist that maybe have some narcissism or sociopath i don't know i can't make those claims this is just my own thinking and alleged just based on you know allegedly what she's saying but she's sitting up here real proud of herself with her feet out like they i'm telling you she thinks she's a bad b she really does i promise you okay so i'm not gonna read because they're going over the excerpt again there she is again this fine catch who left her husband. Okay, so we're going to skip through a lot of this junk. She's taught this. They're going it because we already got it. Um, okay. All right, so that talks about her, her thing. So let's get to what happened. All right, it says, in spite of the memoir's title, the passage printed in the Australian newspaper ended on a cliffhanger and left out the part where Trent Phil gets rejected by Jason. So I just read that article that they're talking about. It just left it at a cliffhanger. It didn't tell you more, right? Because it's embarrassing what else happened. I mean, she's already embarrassed herself with this story. She really, I mean, honestly, guys, I'm telling you, this woman is some I, deranged. Um... But she left it on this cliffhanger and not telling everybody what exactly happened. Oh, this th these things with these ads, y'all, y'all gotta, we gotta skip through it. Um, the piece quickly went viral on Twitter with many seeming to enjoy the prospect of Trentfield's heartbreak. Of course, <laughs> the soulmate said no. She goes to her husband after one night. I'm afraid of dating someone who has no object permanence. They sound fancy. You should just say it. You should put that plain, guys. Lady, your kids will read this one day. Know that you blew up the family because you got too horny on Shiraz. Wow. Telling Trenfield she should not have published this such a shameless account. So this is her book she's trying to sell. So not only that, this, this, this thought box is trying to make a bag off of leaving her family and being for the streets. Sounds like, um, uh, what's her name? Superhead and uh, what's the other one? Brittany Renner, who said Superhead was her hero in high school. So we know how that went. But yeah, there she is. Um, however, the author also has a small number of supporters. I tell you, those are the women who are brave enough to support her because they feel the same way. They think like this, okay? And there's more. Don't get it fooled. There's more, plenty more where she came from who commended her for writing her emotional truth. There it is. As long as it's your truth, it's permissible. It, it, as long as it's your truth. So if a Geppetto, if it's his truth to one touch kids, that's, that's good. Sex trafficker, if his truth, he needs to get a bag off of that. That's good. Like when does the truth stop? Or when is right is right and wrong is wrong. She actually didn't ruin her life for nothing. Let me read it how she wrote it. She actually didn't ruin her life for nothing. One defender wrote, she left a marriage that most likely needed to end. Otherwise, she would have been swayed by another. She wouldn't have been swayed by another. It looks like she's happy and making the best of the situation. Her ex-husband is probably happier, too. Sounds like a win. And now, guys, she's a life coach. And she has not appeared to reconcile with her ex-husband. Guys, this is the catch. This is the back. This is, this is what we needed to see. Leave a comment below. I just can't with this. Leave a vote. Is it make a wish, make a wish peen? The married woman who dying wish was to sleep with her ex-husband. Told her husband that. Is this the woman, married woman who was caught having sex with a homeless man and blamed it on God told her to? Or is she the worst? I haven't titled this yet, so I'm not sure what I'm going to call her. But you guys leave a comment below or any other thoughts. Make sure you guys follow me on all my social media. Mel DeKing on Instagram with underscores. I'll put it up. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.